problem, don't be shy, yeah. All right, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to APEX, the first international conference on smart technology, applied informatics and engineering. To start this beautiful occasion, ladies and gentlemen, please give it a big round of applause for all of us here, ladies and gentlemen. Again, ladies and gentlemen, show this good morning. Come on, show your spirit. Great. Okay, so in this beautiful occasion, I would like also to greet the Dean of Vocational School of Universitas 11 Maret and also the conference organizing committee chair, also the vice deans, keynote speakers, thank you for being here, and also dear moderators and all presenters and participants. Uh, hybrid, we have, this is hybrid, so we have offline and also online who are joining from Zoom application. It's really an honor that you are all here at APEX 2022. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you may know that APEX 2022 is held for two days, today and also tomorrow, and is organized by the Informatics Engineering Department of Vocational School, Universitas Sebelas Maret. APEX 2022 is held under the theme Driving Digital Transformation, towards society 5.0 through smart technology and artificial intelligence. And it's really a great forum for all of us to discuss and to prepare a super smart society by empowering citizens so they will be able to adapt to the era of globalization. And ladies and gentlemen, the organizing committee realize solely that this event cannot be held by themselves, but also with the support from the all sides. That's why we would like also to thank the Institute for Research and Community Service of Universitas Sebelas Maret, the Vocational School of Universitas Sebelas Maret, the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering Indonesia section, and also Asosiasi Pendidikan Tinggi Informatika and Computer Jawa Tengah, Indonesian Journal of Applied Informatics, and also IKAIGI, and also all sides supporting this event. Ladies and gentlemen, to start with, let us sing the national anthem of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Dear honorable guests, for the next agenda, I'd like to give the chance to the conference chair to deliver her report. Ibu Hartati, SSE, MSE, the time is yours. Good morning and best wish for all at Maret University, Professor Dr. Jamal Wiwoho, SHM HUM, to the Honorable Vice Rector of 11 Maret University, Professor Dr. Insinyur Ahmad Yunus, MS, to the Honorable Dean of Vocational School UNS, Dr. Andes Santoso Trihananto, MSE AK. To the Honorable to all the keynote speaker, Associate Professor Naoki Fukuta from Shizuka University, Japan. Associate Professor Wei Cheng Wang from National Chengkung University, Taiwan, Associate Professor Nick Thompson from Curtin University, Australia, and Dr. Harry Prasetyo from 11 Maret University. And to the Honorable Advisory from Sharif Hidayatullah State Islamic University, Jakarta, Mr. Yusuf Durrahman, MIT. To the Honorable Head of Apticom Jawa Tengah, Mr. Zainal Abidin, SSE, MCS, PhD. To the Honorable Chair of IAAA Indonesian Section, Dr. Ing Wahyudi Hasbi, SSE, MCOM. To the Honorable Board of Director ID Big Data, Bagus Ruli Mutakin. To the Honorable Head of the study program at the Vocational School Universitas 11 Maret and all participants. Honorable author and participant, welcome to the first international conference of smart technology, applied informatics and engineering EPIC 2022. EPIC 2022 aims to provide a platform for discussing the issue, challenge, opportunity, and finding of smart technology, applied informatics, and engineering. This year, theme is Driving Digital Tr Transformation to Web Society 5.0 Talk Smart Technology and Artificial Intelligence. This series of conference events include parallel session and plenary session and will consist of five groups are big data analytics, smart technology, immersive technology, information system and general topic for engineering, math, science and engineering. Honorable author and participant, it is a great honor for us to deliver the first EPIC conference to the author and delegate of the event. The response to the call for paper was immense, but from Indonesia and abroad. We would like to express our gratitude and appreciate to all the review who have helped us to preserve the high standard of the manuscript used in proceeding submitted to IAAA. We would also like to express our gratitude to the member of organizing team 
of Epix 2022 for day hard work. As closing, I congratulate for all author that have participated in EPIC 2022 and see you again at second EPIC which is planned to be had in Surakarta. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish you will have a wonderful and frightful time at conference EPIC 2022. Thank you. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the conference chair, Ibu Hartati, SSE, MSE. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like also to pass the microphone to the Dean of Vocational School of Universitas 11 Maret to deliver his remark and later also to open this international conference officially, Bapak Dr. Andes Santoso Trihananto, the time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We welcome you to the first international conference on smart technology, flight informatics, and engineering or epics. The conference is organized and hosted by Informatics Engineering of the School of Vocational Studies, 11 Maret University. I would like to welcome you all to 11 Maret University and also welcome to Surakarta, a city of culture. Distinguished participants, first and foremost, I would like to thank the committee found the time and effort in order to put together this conference. I am pleased to see the list of speakers from both academics and practitioners. Thank you to all the keynote speakers. Associate Professor Naoki Fukuta from Shizuoka University, Japan. Associate Professor Wei Cheng Wang from National Chengkong University, Taiwan. Associate Professor Nick Thompson from Curtin University, Australia, and Dr. Harry Prastio from 11 Maret University for joining us in what we hope could be a fruitful conference. Last but not least, a special thank you to all of the participants who have submitted their papers to be presented in today's conference. Honorable participants, this year's conference them is driving digital transformation toward Society 5.0 through smart technology and artificial intelligence. As the world is progressing, humanity is also moving along with it, and we are now entering the Society 5.0 phase. The aim of Society 5.0 and itself is to create a prosperous human-centered society through the innovation of technologies. Society 5.0 will elevate the potential of individual relationship that we have today by utilizing technology in order to encourage the improvement of people will far through a super smart society. At the age of society 5.0, big data is collected by the internet and will be transformed into a new type of intelligence by artificial intelligence. 
Society 5.0 spark hope that all aspects in life will become more comfortable and sustainable. The importance of technology is something that we all both witness and experience. The digital age has transformed the way people communicate, network, seek help, access information, and learn. From data provided by the World Bank in 2021, on average, Indonesians spend around six hours online. And that is only based on the occurrence that is happening here in Indonesia. The definition of access is now received into the internet, computer, TV, and mobile phone, among other things. Technology has an impact on almost every aspect of our lives, from working to socializing, learning to playing. Our day-to-day -day tasks have become easier and social contact have been made simpler and more effective. Information and communication technology has affected lives by improving timely distribution of information through the media and improved communication, whether it is at home or the workplace. The pandemic that, unfortunately, we are still battling against is a testament to that. In situation where it is impossible to be physically present with other people, information and communication technology fills that gap. I believe that this conference will give insightful research direction for information and communication technology, and more especially Society 5.0. I have high confidence that this conference will be enlivened by numerous leads, finding and innovations. I hope this conference could offer a platform for discussion, knowledge sharing, and networking among information and communication technology enthusiasts. I also hope all of the participants will have a good time and have a useful takeaway from this conference. On behalf of the organizing committee, the first international conference on smart technology, applied informatics and engineering is officially open. And again, I welcome you all to this today's conference. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a very fruitful conference. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Dean of Vocational School of Universitas Sebelas Maret. And now we're going to move on to the keynote speaker session. And for the first plenary session, we're going to have Dr. Harry Prasetyo from the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, Universitas Sebelas Maret. And ladies and gentlemen, to make sure the session runs smoothly, I'd like to introduce your dear Moderator, Bapak Agus Dwi Prianto, SSM Call. He is the Vice Dean for Academics, Research, and Student Affairs of Vocational School Universitas Sebelas Maret, the founder of Indonesia Technology Enhanced Language Learning, and also my former lecturer, and also my dear colleague. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Bapak Agus Dwi Prianto.
Dear moderator, you have one hour for the presentation and also question and answer of both the keynote speaker. You told me it's three hours. One hour, sir. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good morning, gentlemen. Turn my mask here so that you can see my face clearly. Okay. Fantastic. Can you hear my voice? Cool. Thank you very much. So once again, uh, thank you for joining the Apex and thank you for giving me the opportunity to sit down here to accompany one of the best speakers, one of the best uh, scholars in artificial intelligence. Okay, so it's an honor for me to accompany Dr. Harry Prasetyo. So before I invite him to sit beside me, let me just, uh, what do you call it? I'm not reading his curriculum vitae because it's too long. Even it's longer than, it's more than uh, five pages. Fantastic. And uh, you know, Dr. Harry Prasetyo is now a teaching staff at Suplas Madrid University at the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. And uh, he got his PhD from Taiwan. It was the National Taiwan National University of Science and uh, Technology. And also, uh, he got his master's also from the same country, but different universities. It was from National Taiwan University. So without further ado, let us invite, let us welcome Dr. Harry Prasetyo. Dr. Prasetyo, once again, the faculty staff and the faculty of mathematics and natural sciences and UNS. So he's one of our best scholars. Uh, and uh, uh, should I call you, you mask or you? <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, you will have a further contact or Yes, closer contact with Baheri after uh, his presentations. Baheri, we have one hour, Mas Al told us. So I will give you 30 for 40 minutes to share your ideas. And you know what? When last night I got his presentations, uh, this is fantastic. I am interested in learning more about artificial intelligence after reading his presentation. And I believe I will fall in love with more with artificial intelligence, especially about digital image retrieval. So, Dr. Harry, the next 40 hours is for you. Uh, 40 minutes, I mean. Thank you very much. Uh. Uh, can I share up my screen? Uh, operator, please. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Harry Prasio from Department of Informatics, Universitas Blas Marat, uh, Indonesia. And today I would like to present my research entitled Smart Technology on Content-Based Batik Image Retrieval Toward Society 5.0. And it's my outline. 
And firstly, I would like to introduce for you what, what, what is going on with the Batik Image Retrieval and how to perform the Batik Image Retrieval system using the handcrafted feature extraction as well as deep learning based feature extraction because we, we know that the deep learning is very, very uh, fast growing research in these recent years because uh, more and more expensive uh, devices or more challenging devices has been found and that's, that's so uh, it can support the deep learning research and I also give you some insight how to perform the optimization process for batik image retrieval and I introduce for you the meta heuristics optimizations um okay okay as well as um wait, wait, I have a problem in here Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, I have problem. Okay, I, I also would like to present for you uh, about image testing as well as the fi final result and that is uh, experimental result at the end of my presentations. And firstly, I would like to introduce for you what is the content-based image retrieval system. Uh, image retrieval system, uh, I'm to return a set of images from database with similarity constraint, that is uh, similarity in the content and the edge patterns, color similarity, and so on. Okay, in the image retrieval system, we have a query image also the target image query image is an image with a specific keywords and the target image that is uh, all image in a specific database and this is the illustration for the uh, image retrieval system suppose that here we we type rows we can search a lot of rows image like this one and here we call it as the tech-based image retrieval system because in the keywords, we just type the keywords. But in the image retrieval system, suppose that we have so many, many uh, images like this one. In here, I use the empathic image data sets. And if I want to find just like uh, this one, the uh, this image, uh, we can give a set of similar image and we call it this one is query image. and a set of retrieval image is given here. So in the image retrieval system, we don't really need to type our keywords. We just uh, find our, uh, we've just input the query image to, uh, to be a keyword. And here I have several image retrieval system that using the Batik, since Batik is traditional, Loads from Indonesia that this uh, has very artistic value and complex repeatable patterns. Uh, Batik appears on the traditional wedding ceremonies such as uh, coronations, Japanese kings, uh, celebration of Japanese New Year's, and etc. Um, Batik also has several special properties that can be regarded as textural imaging. So. Uh, finding a similar batiks in uh, big data sets becomes very challenging because, uh, because uh, the, the patterns are quite huge. Okay, the first one, how to perform uh, image retrieval system. Uh, firstly, I have um, this paper, uh, batik image retrieval using ODBDC image features. In this paper, uh, I use the ordered Teacher block truncation coding features. Uh, that is, um, ODF BTC is a simple image compression techniques uh, for, for performing compression. So, if we want to compute an uh, image feature, we can simply compute from the compressed data stream. And in this paper, we also use the particle swarm optimizations to improve the performance accuracy. So, but what is the or ODBTC and the ODBTC is uh, image compression technique that perform uh, computation with simple, simple computation and it avoids the complicated mathematical computations. Suppose that we have inputs image like this one, and we have um, perf we perform the quantizer determination to get min and mass quantizer and then we also get the bitmap image generations 
Okay, in the image retrieval system using the OTPT features, um, we need to compute the color features and texture features to measure the similarity between the query image and target image in database. And it's our system. Suppose that we have a query image here and we perform ODPTC compressions and then we perform feature extraction that's compressed from uh, color features and bit pattern features. And then we perform a similarity computation to uh, obtain a set of retrieved image. And it's the color, uh, illustration of uh, color feature computation. Suppose we have red, green, and blue color channels, and we have a color code book here. Uh, we can get index RGB channel, and then we get the color features like this one. And it's the illustration for texture features. Now, suppose we have a bit patch image like this one, and we have a bit patterns code book like this one, and then we perform index bitmatch image, uh, we will get the texture features uh, in us uh, as this one. And then we can perform the similarity uh, measurement using the distant matrix. And we just measure the distance between their feature descriptor. Uh, we can use so many, many, many distant metrics such as L1 distance, our L2 distance, L, uh, G square distance, modified camera distance, and the other met, uh, methods. And uh, here we just use um, modification for camera. And here we, we need alpha one, alpha two, and alpha three. Okay, here uh, we call, we refer that alpha one, alpha two, and alpha three as the similarity waiting constant. And then uh, how to perform, how to improve the performance accuracy of the proposed method using the particle swarm optimization, which we need to consider. We, we only need to consider that the alpha one, alpha two, alpha three as the, uh, um, how to say, a scalar that can be optimized. Then alpha one, alpha two, alpha three is encoded into X bar or its particle swarm. And then we perform you know, optimization to receive to achieve the best performance and then here we we can see that i have some experiments but this experiment only uh only with uh, very small data sets that is we have 70 uh, 97 image classes and each class we have 16 images and the total public in data set is only 1000 552 images. So all batik in the same class are regarded as the similar either similar images. So this is an example of uh body image data, data, database and is the practical application. Okay. Suppose that we have a query image here in the in this part in the left hand side and then we get we have a set of retrieval images uh, given in here but we can see here uh, some image is wrong so we need to improve the performance of our system uh, okay we can use uh, particle swarm optimization to improve the performance accuracy suppose that we have uh, unoptimized versions in here we have error for one images but after performing particle swarm optimization we get full um, final optimized version with uh, all correct correct retrieved image okay so on the optimized optimized version of similarity weighted concern give better performance okay this is the unoptimized version and this is the optimized versions and we have wrong image here but after performing optimization process, we get all the correct image. So uh, it's very, very simple idea, but we can get a good result. Okay, but what is the main benefits of this proposed methods? Okay, in the, the previous, I just uh, mentioned how to compute the OTPTC image retrieval, but how, how can we get a good score if we perform 
the ODBTC feature on scramble image. You can refer this paper if you are interested. So uh, suppose that we have image data set here and we perform um, scramble of all image and then we perform uh, image retrieval. Suppose that we have query image like this one and we want to receive and we uh, measure the similarity uh, distance using the scramble image and we get this result. Okay, I give you uh, um, intuitions how to perform the image scrambling. The, the issue one is using the Arnold transformations to perform image scramble. Suppose that we have uh, these transformations, X and Y is about uh, PCL locations. And here, A, matrix A is just a matrix that is determinants of this matrix should be one to achieve receive reversible image transformations. And this one is an example. Suppose that we have, sorry. Uh, okay, suppose we have original image like this one after performing image scramble or um, image transformation with round one, we get this kind of result after uh, performing image scramble with round three, we get this result. So uh, using very simple uh, Arnold transformation, we can get scrambled image. And then how to perform the ODBT? Suppose that we have original image like this one after we perform scramble image and then perform the image compression and then we decode image, we will have this kind of image even though it's it's not quite good, but visually it's almost similar to the original image. So we can perform the image retrieval system using the decoded image like this one. Okay, uh, what what we, we have, we, we will get. Suppose that uh, we have um, LBV feature dimension is 59 and then HPDC is 48. And this is from the previous uh, experiments. And this one, if we perform the transformation or we perform scramble, um, LBP methods, we have very bad result here. We have uh, one, one error here. And then, but if we perform uh, 10 scramble, 10 round scramble image, and we have so many error for the LBV feature, but our methods only have uh, four errors in here. So our method is quite efficient for performing image retrieval in the scramble version. And this is the another results. And uh, here the LBV has so many, many errors here, but we only have three uh, errors for a set of retrieval image. And this is another result. Okay, what, what can we do for the other uh, occasion for the image retrieval system I would like to present for you. Uh, we can per also perform the image retrieval system using Gabor filter output. And in here you can refer this paper. Uh, I already mentioned that uh, we can compute the, uh, the image feature from the Gabor filter magnitude and we use the statistical modeling under the maximum likelihood estimation for estimating the distribution estimator. And as the Gabor filter magnitude at um, illustrations, suppose that we have input image here. After performing a Gabor filter magnitude, we have a set of Gabor filter magnitudes like this, this one over U orientation and skills and suppose that we only uh, pick one filtered image and then we just perform the MLP to obtain the distribution optima, uh, estimator. Here we need to use the um, PDF Gaussian for the first assumptions and this is the um, Gaussian, the PDF of Gaussian and then we perform um, likelihood of this data set X and X is drawn from Gaussian distributions. And then we, perf we, we, we get the likelihood like this one. And then we perform log likelihood for this uh, data and we can get this one. After that, we just need to take derivative with respect to uh, mu and setting by zero and we get this 
results. And then we get the first estimator for uh, our Gaussian assumptions. And then if we take derivatives with respect to uh, sigma and setting by zero, we will get this one and we will get the second estimator for our Gaussian assumptions. And this is for the first assumption and the second assumption, we can use the relic, uh, relic distributions and the PDF of relics is given like this one. And we perform the likelihood of data X under relic assumption, we will get this result. And then we perform log likelihood, we will get this result. And then after performing the derivative and with respect to uh, gamma and setting by zero, we will get this result. And this is the estimator for the relic assumptions. And then if we perform uh, goodness of statistical fitting on Gabor filtered magnitudes, we will get this result. Okay, and this one is the original data is in a uh, blue color and the Gaussian and the relic is given in the green, green and red color respectively. And we can see that the Gabor filter is well fitted with Gaussian and relic uh, distributions. So in our proposed system, we can use um, feature descriptor from Gaussian estimator as well as for, for from you know, relic distributions. And here we can use L1, L2 or modified Canberra distance to measure the similarity. But the main benefit for, 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 from this method is about this one. We can use, um, we can compute, directly compute the relic estimator from the Gaussian estimator that is the mean value and standard deviations. So uh, we don't really need to compute the relic estimator if we already have the Gaussian estimator. Okay, this is the practical application of the Gabor filters and here, uh, we use the L2 distance matrix. Suppose that this one is featured from Gaussian and this one from Relic. In here, we can see that we have four errors image because the feature dim dimensionality of Relic is just half of um, Gaussian. And this is the another result. Uh, we have error here and we have error here. Okay. And what we have done, um, how to improve. So because a research is just like a playing system, like one method, and then we can improve, improve, and improve. And then how to improve the performance. We can use the maximum run length of LBP and sine cosine optimizer to improve the performance. Here, we just uh, offers a simple solutions using maximum run length of LBP and color feature to perform the image reflow system. But, and here we use sine cosine algorithms to improve the performance accuracy. And here the illustration, suppose that we have um, image, sub image, three sub image like this one. And here we can have um, LBP string like this one, zero, zero, this one. And we if we, uh, draw the binary string, we can 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and so forth. And for all three methods, we have a more similar uh, binary string except for this part and this part. But if we perform the similarity uh, uniform measurements, we will get this result 6, 4, and 6. But if we perform uh, the, if we encode the, this LPP using some methods, we will get nine, 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 and uh, all, all LPP method is the same, but in our methods, the LPP code is totally different, three, four, and two. Okay. And then how to perform, uh, how to improve the accuracy, we can use SCI, SCI, a and its variants using this uh, problem optimization, we just find the optimum alpha one, alpha two, and alpha three in order to find the optimum similarity weight. And this one is uh, visual inspections. Suppose that this one is from the previous methods. Uh, we have error here, 
But in our methods, we have uh, error here. We have three error, but our feature dimensionality is only nine, but the former method is 59. So our method is very, very, very uh, short, very short dimensionality in the feature um, image features. So if we perform, if we add color features, we will get this result. Okay, and this one, the effect of optimization process. Here, without uh, optimization, we have one error here, but after performing uh, similar uh, optimization, we get all correct image like this one. Okay, and then uh, this one, all of, me, all of previous methods are about the handcrafted features and then how to improve the performance if we use the deep learning approach. Firstly, um, I improve the performance using the convolution neural networks. Here, we, it's just um, our it's our simple method. We have inputs here, and we have sets of convolution, ReLU, max pooling, and so forth. And at the end, we have fully connected layers here, and we just uh, get this uh, this part as feature descriptor. If you are interested, you can um, refer this paper about the batik image retrieval, retrieval using convolution, convolutional neural network. And it's our results. We will get all correct results. And then uh, what is, uh, is there any other way to improve the performance? Of course, uh, we already uh, published a new res our results about uh, batik image retrieval using Siamis networks and locality sensitivity hashing, and it will be published soon. And our proposed methods employs the CNN for feature extraction and embedding, and it's our res our results. So we have um, this one query image and a set of data base here. We perform CNN and perform image hashing like this one. And then we perform a feature hashing for image indexing. And then uh, we perform similarity measurement using the Hemming descent. So this one, the feature extractions. Okay, here we have positive image and we have anchor image and we have negative image. And uh, firstly, we perform random aug augmentation like this one and we perform the deep neural network in here to get. Um, some feature uh, intermediate feature y plus y a y minus and then we perform um, linear projection and then we perform embedded distance commutation here and then we get the loss commutation in here and this is the visual inspections okay this suppose that we have a query image like this one using siamis network we we get all correct images and LSA and another method. We also have all correct images. This is another uh, result. Suppose we have query image like this one. We have three error here, but for the other methods, we have all correct images except this one. But the color is almost similar. Okay, and then another approach we can conduct for static image retrieval. We can use uh, deep learning that is, uh, for example, we use a uh, bit entropy maximization approach and triplet learning. And this is our results. Uh, it will be appear on this conference on 2022, this year. And we use a uh, triplet learning framework for visual representations. And we perform image testing under the bit entropy maximization approach. And then this research overcome the traditional feature extraction scheme. And the classical methods rely on the handcrafted features. And it requires large amount for storing feature descriptor. Okay. And for the feature extractions, uh, we have the same, the same idea that is we have positive image and core image and negative image and then we perform the deep convolutional neural networks here and then we will 
obtain the positive image latent representation here, anchor image, image latent representation, negative image latent representation here. And then we perform hashing has layer and in, in here, we get plus one, plus one or one or zero, one, zero, one for hashing. And then we perform encoder and then we perform consistency loss here. And then we get the positive or negative image distributions. And this is our results. Okay, and this is our uh, results. Suppose that we have query image like this one and we will get the all retrieved image like this one. But some occasion we have errors image just like this one. Okay. And another methods we 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 have been developing is hashing based static image retrieval using progressive multi state training. And this paper will be presented in this conference also. And then in this methods we we use the deep convolution neural networks for performing embedding process, and we involve the contrast contrastive learning frameworks and then the embedded vector is then projected into Hemming space okay here we also perform scrambled image to maximize the learning capability and capacity of the networks okay this one is our image retrieval system suppose that we have so many uh, input images here we perform convolution at the first level and then convolution at the second level, short level, and so forth. And we have uh, multi-state multi uh, convolution here. And then we will get the feature map over here. And then we perform local feature integrator to obtain the uh, image hashing. We will get image hashing plus one, minus one, plus one, and so forth. Yeah. And here, it should be the most important thing for our methods is we need to perform image scrambling. Suppose that we have input image like this one, and then we just, for example, we need uh, image scrambling with S is equal to two. We just divide by two by two here, and then we just uh, randomly scramble, just uh, how to say, just put this, this part in this part and so forth. Okay, and this one is our result. And we suppose that we have query image like this one, and this one is the results, this result, and this one is our query, and we have so many results here. And here we we, we see that all methods uh, give a good results. And then uh, here at the end, we just make a performance comparison overall our methods. So here we just uh, measure our performance under the image database cons that consists of 97 image classes and its class consists of 16 images and the total image in the public database is 1000F552. Okay, and here, in our similarity search, we use the KNN, and then we use more divide camera distance and humming distance. This one for non-binary features or handcrafted feature, image features. And in the humming distance, um, we we utilize the humming distance for binary features. So in our comparison, we perform. Um, uh, Accuracy, we perform, uh, we compute accuracy overall, all images. So all images are tuned as query images. Okay, and this is our image database. We have so many, many image database here and here. Okay, this is uh, the, the accuracy on textural feature descriptor. So we uh, firstly measure the performance and compare the performance under the original feature descriptor. We can see here, we have so many, many methods here, and it's the feature dimensionality here, and then we have accuracy here. Uh, we can see here that the ODL BP uh, give a bit, uh, almost the best result, that is uh, 94%, but the LDP also have 
um, a good result here, CLBB. But the um, how to say the fish dimensionality is quite high. Okay. And then if we want to directly improve the performance, we actually we can just simply add the color features. Okay, suppose that we have a color feature and we add the color feature and we will get the accuracy. And here we can see that accuracy is almost near 100%. So it denotes that our methods are quite good here. Okay, and we can see that the color feature significantly improve the retrieval performance. And suppose that we want to compare our methods and the, um, with the deep learning approaches, uh, we just compute the, uh, the storage requirement in the in bytes. So we can see here, it's our handcrafted features, LBP, and this one is from uh, deep learning approaches. Here we can see that uh, uh, we have several image feature dimension, but we can see here the steroids requirement for um, deep learning approach is very, very, very short. That is only eight bytes compared to the other methods. And we have almost 100% accuracy. Here, the progressive multi stage here, we, we achieve 99.7. 76% accuracy. So here we can see that the progressive multi state gives the best performance. And here uh, we can see that progressive multi state multi state training is superior compared to the other methods. Can you finish in 10 minutes? Okay, already, already, oh, okay. Cool. Thank it, you. It's, okay. And it's our conclusions. Um, Various methods can be used to extract an image feature for a static image retrieval system. Uh, okay, here the deep learning approaches yield better result compared to the handcrafted features, and the size of static image dataset can be increased to further improve the performance accuracy. Because based on our experience, the deep learning approach um, in our experiment, the deep learning resource is already overfitting, so we need to improve the size of static image data sets. So the other conclusion is um, we can use another meta heuristic algorithm to further improve the performance accuracy. Okay, thank you very much. Fantastic, thank you. It's very good timing, Rampa Ayeri. Would you please give a big hand, a big applause for it? Thank you very much. For... Uh, Harry, I reminded you to have 10 minutes, but you finish it very timely. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I learned a lot this morning. Uh, so far, I have just known LPP is one of the prominent ministers in Indonesia, but now I have another LPP, local binary pattern. Okay, so all right, so we have 30 minutes to have a question and answer section. So we invite uh, the participants both here at the vocational school of uh, UNS and also uh, the participants uh, at the Zoom room. So we invite everybody. You may raise your hand if you would like to deliver your questions orally, or if you would please. Also, feel free to post your questions in the chat box. So let me just read your questions and then Harry will respond. If it is very difficult to say in Bahasa Indonesia, please feel free to say it in English. Ya, Ibu Bapak, kalau susah ngomongnya menyampaikan dalam Bahasa Indonesia, boleh kok menyampaikannya dalam Bahasa Inggris, gak apa-apa gitu ya. Oke. Okay. Saya akan berusaha menerjemahkan ke bahasa Indonesia sebisa saya. <laughs> Oke, okay, silakan kalau ada yang raisen. Uh, Pak Heri, could you please uh, well, it put your screen down? Oke, okay, so that we can invite everybody in the screen. Stop screen, I mean. Stop uh, share screen. Cool. So, anyone is raising the hand? Oh, I have one. I think I can see... Uh, it's Ovi de Crowley Vishnu Adi. I am familiar with this name. Okay. 
Pak Ovid, could you please turn your camera on? Yes, you are on. Operator, please spotlight uh, Pak Ovid. Pak Ovid, I miss yours. Okay, thank you for the time, uh, Mr. Agus. Uh, my question uh, for to Mr. Harry, PST. How are you? <laughs> uh, my question is uh, the attention mechanism of the vision transformer is uh, begun to be investigated in image processing. What the uh, uh, future upper, uh, opportunities? For example, uh, in the end-to-end -end object detection with transformer, uh, how do you feel about using the IP as a solution to a new challenge in uh, computer vision using uh, attention mechanism? Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Harry. Thank you, Pak Harry. Pak Ovid uses too many technical terms for me. Can you catch? Could you catch his uh, question? Hey, sorry, I cannot uh, clearly hear your voice. Oh, Can okay. you repeat so, your question or just type in our in the chat room? Yeah, but okay, okay. feel free to type your questions in the chat room. Oh, so probably that's better for us to, uh, what is it, identify the real problem. Okay, okay, thank you. So I have one already at the chat room, but we are waiting for part of it. All right, so there, the attention mechanism of the vision transformer has begun to be investigated in image processing. What are, do you think, uh, the future opportunities? Yeah, one of the examples is the end-to-end -end object detection with transformers. So how do you feel about using VIT as a solution to the new challenges? Your response, Paeri. Okay, thank you very much for your questions. And the question is about the transformer. Okay, um, actually the transformer is about the vision transformer or we call it as VIT. And then in recent years, we already have uh, some research about convolutional vision transformer or CVT. Uh, as uh, based on my experience, um, the CVT performs better compared to the CNN, convolutional neural networks, especially for um, image reconstruction or for solving ill-post inverse imaging problem. But for the image retrieval system, the computation burden for the CVT is quite high compared to the CNN. So uh, we have tried several several ways to perform a CVT to train the CVT, but the computation now time is quite high. So uh, we still um, find our way how to perform uh, the computation on the learning process of the CVT. But in my personal opinion, it will be a challenge, and I guess that the CVT will be uh, super compared to the. Uh, former approach, especially for the handcrafted feature or the convolutional neural networks. Because the CVT or convolutional vision transformers already yields the better result compared to the CNN. So I guess in the image retrieval system, convolutional vision transformer will uh, give the better result compared to the convolutional vision trans uh, convolutional neural, neural networks. But we haven't tried it yet. Maybe in the future, for maybe just uh, one year later, we will try to perform the CVT or convolutional vision transformer for the batik image retrieval. That's that's all. All right. Uh, could you hear the response from Pa Kerry, Pa Ovid? Yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much, uh, Ovid. We are next, uh, we are moving then to Ibu Berliana. Uh, she has already posted the uh, chat. I want to ask what are your consideration for using the double KN, KKN? 
KKN apa CNN ini tadi ya? <laughs> maybe, yeah. oh, maybe K Nearest Network or K N N. Okay, K N N. Okay, K Nearest Network. Okay, this one. Why we use K N N? K K Nearest Network or K N N? K N N. Because we want to find a set of similar image, and our our query image is only one, and our query is one, and the target image is maybe around 1,000 or 2,000 in the data sets, in databases. So we just com uh, compute the similarity distance, for example, Euclidean distance or um, Manhattan distance for the from for uh, one query to the target image in the database. And then we find just uh, why we use, uh, we, we perform KNN, KNN because um, here, we just uh, want to find a similar image. The similar image is defined uh, based on the similarity discount, uh, distance score. If the distance is too low, very low, it means that our image is almost similar. And if the distance is very high, and then our uh, image is almost different. So we perform the KNN. And then we just perform gear snake bar over K because we want to find under only K images from the databases. So we perform the KNN in here because it's just the most simple and uh, easy way to uh, get a set of similar image from databases compared to the others. Okay. Okay, cool. Ibu Berliana, so that's K and N. All right, thank you very much. The next uh, questions, please feel free to, re okay. Response from Ibu Berliana, thank you. All right, so we are inviting uh, the participants from this room. If you would, please feel free, then you will be on the camera. <laughs> okay. And uh, also from the Zoom room, if you have any question, please feel free to post your question or raise your hand. Uh, the operator will spotlight your screen. Anyone? I'm waiting. I'm counting to five, four, three. Oh, your door price, yeah? <laughs> okay, two, one. Okay, if we, there is no more questions, thank you very much, Pa Eri, and everybody in this room, and everybody in the, uh, what do you call it, in the Zoom room. Now, let me just share. Uh, I will share my screen because I am now with my screen. So, okay. <clears throat> Yes. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So here is further details about Bahiri. Bahiri has produced more than seventy publications indexed in Scopus. 14 of them are cited by 14 times. That was wonderful. That is wonderful. Congratulations for that, Pak Heri. Ibu and Bapak, you can again check further details about Pak Heri at uns.id slash Heri Prasetyo underscore Iris 1103 or uns.id id uns.id slash harry prasetyo underscore scopus then you will have all his publications and you will see how or the level of his scholarships thank you very much for harry uh without your permission i post your email account for the participants so that they have further contact with you i believe they will learn a lot for, from you Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the end of our sessions. Give once again a big applause for Pa Heri Prasetyo, PhD. Now I should pass the microphone back to my colleague, Albert. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, 
So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the first keynote speaker for today. And after this, we're going to move on to the parallel session. And for the offline participants here, especially for the dean, for the vice dean, and also uh, if you want to continue your activity, please do. <laughs> we're not going to hold you here. But if you want to stay here and then join uh, the parallel session, that's going to be totally okay. <laughs> All right, so ladies and gentlemen, for the uh, authors and also presenter, we would like to move on to the parallel session. We have breakout rooms for all of you. So for presenter, make sure that you go to the breakout room. As you can see right now on the screen, we're going to have uh, breakout rooms with your ID. So make sure that you go to the breakout rooms. And in the breakout rooms, you're going to have your moderator who will guide you and lead you to the presentation also, okay? And after that, uh, from the final session, just follow uh, the moderator in each breakout room. Once again, uh, there are like 1A, room 1A, room 1B, room 1C, room 2, and then room 3, room 4, and room 5. And then check your ID again, your presenters. Okay, and don't forget to rename your account with your ID so that it's easier for the operator to put you in the designated breakout room ladies and gentlemen okay once again for unassigned uh, participants you are asked to rename yourself with the id so that it's easier for the operator to put you in the breakout rooms okay and in the breakout rooms you're going to have a discussion with the moderator there like Babur and Ibu, please rename yourself with the ID so that it's easier for the operator to put you in the breakout rooms. Babur and Ibu, silakan untuk merename atau menamai ulang kembali nama Anda dengan ID yang sudah diberikan sebelumnya supaya operator kami lebih mudah untuk memasukkan Anda ke breakout room yang sudah kami sediakan. Sekali lagi, kami mohon untuk para presenter untuk melakukan Penamaan akunnya, akun Zoom-nya berdasarkan ID yang sudah kami berikan sebelumnya. So it's easier for the operator to put you in the breakout rooms. And in each breakout room, there will be moderators that will guide the parallel session. Just follow the instruction and strict to the rule. That's all, ladies and gentlemen, for the first day. Have an enjoyable discussion in the breakout room of the parallel session. Thank you.